Nick, you were going to say something. I forgot what I was going to say. That's okay. It's because I made I've such got, good points. I've got, I've got things to unpack here. First of all, no. <laughs> no! Okay. Okay. It's Carnage is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. But the reason why I love Venom and Carnage firmly off of this list, and like the main reason is that I think they aren't the best Spider-Man villains. Hmm. Like number one, that was that was it for me because if and, and that was like what I asked myself after Doom and Magneto um, because they're like crossover caliber guys and Thanos too, and it was like um, like who's the, who the big bads are right? Did you say that or Nick did? I think um, I so. w- w- whatever <laughs> who, who <laughs> the big sad. bads are right? And your your main brand is Amazing Spider Man. That's like you've been your best seller for at least the last thirty years, right? Right. 35, probably, right? And uh, actually, probably the whole length of your Marvel brand, if we're being honest, right? And so who's the best villain in there is, like, pretty important, right? Because that, to me, is, like, uh, it's like picking the Joker on your list, right, in the DC. And I know I keep using that as a thing, but um, it's, 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 it's because Batman is, like, their big one. So if you want to say, hey, who's who's his big guy, let's pick that one. Or, or you might pick Luther for the same reason, right? Because it's uh, something where you're like, okay, let's pick that guy. Um, the other thing with Venom and Carnage is that I don't think they've had enough like good stories. They like had their debuts at the end of the 80s, and they were really cool, and those were awesome stories. And then they had a couple other ones, like you know, in like uh, after Eric Larson got a hold of them, like after like issue 350 ish, you know what I mean, getting into the 400s in the early 90s, they start to get a little cheesy. And we get, like, just a million Venom spinoffs. Like, all those miniseries and a bunch of them. And I'm sorry to say this to everyone who loves Venom Lethal Protectors. They're not very good. I would agree with that. You know I, I, mean? I read Lethal Protectors yeah. when I was, yeah, like, I love, uh, in my and, late teens. And, and I think there's a there's a big difference between cool and good. Mm-hmm. And all the Venom stuff and Carnage stuff is always freaking cool because they are so cool inherently. Their design is super cool. The idea of them is really cool. The twisted thing. Uh, I've always been a big fan of like big creepy grin venom as opposed to like huge monstrous tongue Hulk venom because mm-hmm. I think that image is iconic and the idea of twisted Spider Man is like what makes him cool. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. um, it's like, what if Spider Man was stronger and evil? He'd be venom, right? right. Like that was the original kind of thing when I was a kid. That's how I understood him. Mm-hmm. But they really survived for like a long time on cool. I think. Carnage is one of the villains that Marvel handles the best because they only use him like every two or three years. And every time he shows up, they do something awesome with him. And it doesn't have to be super intelligent or like mind blowingly plot twist or deep. It just has to be awesome, right? And it's always going to be like good action. And if you assign good art to it, he like. Uh, like the Stegman art, Absolute Carnage is just yeah. so good. Oh, you know what I mean? It's so dark, and there's so it's so gross because there's so much like little bits of symbiote all over, and it's slithering, and it's in you and taking you over, and it gives me the heebie-jeebies, mm-hmm. and I really like that. But um, I just don't think that he has like the like quality moments that like uh, some other guys have. I don't think that Carnage has like, yeah, man, like because if I had to be like, hey, let's pick graphic novels to recommend for like our top five villains like I would probably pick other people over Carnage just just for like hey man here's like purely why this guy is the villain although I think Carnage is one of the most all time fun villains because Maximum Carnage exists and that's just so 90s mm-hmm. and it's so fun you know what I mean like, I think that's maybe why I, I hold him so highly is because it's sort of a less is more thing where so many villains we've seen more yeah. and whenever it's Carnage, just like you said, it's going to be awesome. So it's almost, it almost feels like a treat when Carnage is in something awesome. And you it's see just it. like the nineties baby in me, right? Where it's just like, even if it's not good, it'll be rad. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like, and I, I, so I can respect people who dig Carnage, but I think there's like deeper, deeper Spidey villains. I think that, um, like when I looked at it, my top Spidey villains like was uh, shout out to the Kingpin, um, but I couldn't put him over. The big debate for me was Green Goblin or Doctor Octopus. That was that was another one I was having too when I was debating Spider-Man yeah. villains as a whole. Yeah, and and I think Carnage is like a really easy one to like the most. But if I was thinking about like like who's his best villain, uh, I know. There was a while there when uh, they were building up to Superior Spider-Man where they really tried to put over Auk as like, he's the best villain, he's the best villain. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you ever beat the Green Goblin. That's number three on my list. That's fair. Over I've... Thanos. See, me. and that's, that's one I Because I think Goblin's got the history, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and sorry to cut you off, but I think it's super, 
what makes Goblin such a good villain for me, and why I think he's interesting in ways that Doom and Magneto aren't, is that it's so personal. You know what I mean? It's so personal with him. And original Venom was like that, but I think Venom's gotten so far away from that that it's not like that. You know what I mean? And I think mm -hmm. that's part of what makes Carnage cool and also makes him, like, not as good is because it's generally so impersonal. I think Absolute Carnage and, like, generally speaking, Donny Cates' Venom goes a long way to making the, the symbiote characters, like, really good as opposed to just awesome. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, but I would never say he's the best actor in the world but he's like the best <laughs> action star of all time right mm. so like maybe carnage is like the best action villain of all time but i i just don't think it's like as good as green goblin because every time he shows up and norm is goblin again like you know shit's going on right because mm -hmm. no one's safe like no one is safe mj's uh, like up for grabs and may is up for grabs like oh man harry now harry's kid normie too right like at the end of the whole red goblin yeah. thing like and the, I, I think the red goblin thing was like pretty cool as well uh i think <laughs> that's marrying our two threes yeah right like there <laughs> we go the red Jim goblin, goblin at number together. three <laughs> <laughs> i think that uh compromised. i think that killing gwen stacy is such a huge moment too mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. like because <laughs> like before that and i think even afterwards like you gotta look at um like, when, when when have they ever killed the love interest? You know what I mean? Like, actually killed them, right? The thing I find funny, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but the ironic thing is that in Ultimate Comics, uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man, Carnage is the one who kills Gwen Stacy and not the Green Goblin. Which I think is yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it funny. Yeah. Technically, she, like, becomes Carnage after getting yeah. killed and turning into goop or something. It's Technically. weird. Technically. That's, yeah. like, 50 <laughs> issues <laughs> later when they were like, the yeah. clone saga? I don't know. That was, Who like, knows? getting late into the Ultimate Spider-Man. The yeah. wheels were starting to come off a bit, but it was cool. Yeah, Nick's right. It was weird. It was post-Ultimatum. Things yeah. happened, man. Yeah. <laughs> we had to do something. Everyone was dead. Post-Ultimatum, I'm free Hickman. Yeah, post-Ultimatum, pre Hickman was a goddamn... It was a Wild West, man. Yes. Like, anything went. They had to, they had to friggin' print books somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, I had, like, Green Goblin... I was like my top Spider-Man villain. Just because I think he's got, he's got the history. I think he, he's, like... I find him more terrifying as a villain because it's so personal. Whereas, like, Carnage, the scary thing about Carnage is that he's going to kick down your door and kill you and he doesn't, he doesn't know who you are, he doesn't give a shit. I think the scary thing about Great Goblin is that, like, you know, like he's out there and, like, he knows who you are. He's a super genius and he's, like, totally twisted and fucked up and messed up in the head and he, like, will torture your family just because he decided because you slighted him one day. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. But that was to, to reveal mine freaking one. That was mine. Um... That's my big carnage argument. Yeah, that's rebuttal. Fair. And and that's the, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like I, I think you you even sway me when I I just think of Spider Man villains in general being like, well, I probably wouldn't say Carnage is my favorite Spider Man villain. It was just sort of trying to be objective. But you're right that uh, I'd say Doctor Octopus and Green Goblin do score higher points in like the history and the per well, the fact that Green Goblin is. Harry's dad. <laughs> That's like, like if your best friend's dad was Doc Ock trying married to kill you. May back in the day, right? right like, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm. he took over Peter's body for like a year of comics, yeah. right? It's one of those, it, like, it really depends what boxes you're putting higher. Because if our criteria yeah, is so. like how personal it is, or how cool they look, or the mark they have on history, yeah. or how like popularity and things like that, or general just look yeah. of the character, it's. I'd, yeah, you could almost sway... I, I could be easily swayed on this either way. I wouldn't, like, take this to my grave, being like, no, it's carnage, but... The history angle is is also, like, I think Green Goblin uh, goes a long way to developing Marvel as a brand. Mm -hmm. Early in, right? Because he's, like, Spidey's first best villain, you know what I mean? And so, in the early days... I think Doom checks that box, too, mm -hmm. right? Where he's been good in every era of Marvel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even and, me, and, like, instrumental, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's all good. Even me and my brother were talking about the Green Goblin the other day, and just, like, how... when you really, I think we're just used to the Green Goblin, and I think we forget how, like, weird of a character it is. That you're like, Spider-Man's fighting a goblin. Like, a guy dressed as a goblin, he flies on a glider, he throws pumpkins that are bombs. I always like, forget it's just that so it's a guy with a mask, Yeah, Because right? right? they do a good job of making the mask emote in modern comics yeah. and mm -hmm. stuff when he's talking, and then, like, they get to the point where Spidey beats him, he pulls the mask off, and you're like, right, it's just a <laughs> <there. laughs> It's all line head. Okay, mm -hmm. question, what's the deal with his hair? Is it cornrows? <laughs> I, I've I always wondered this since I, I was a kid. So I think it's like just a callback to the early uh, the early colors. Yeah, yeah. It just stayed. Yeah, because 
the artists like it because all fans of the early Earth. Oh, for sure. But now I'm just like, you know what I mean? Like, what what was uh, like Ditko trying to con- convey there? Because he, I think he did actually great faces, for, especially for yeah. the '60s. Mm-hmm. Like, he did really, really emo- like emotive stuff. Yeah. So it's just like, what were you going for there? <laughs> I just thought there were stripes. Like I just started assuming he had like black hair with red stripes. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> that it was might, it. might not be that. It's like but... the glare, right? Of yeah. really Dark hair. You know, mm-hmm. like it's yeah, the yeah, same way. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Joker is sometimes drawn with black hair with like that green line through yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably something similar to that maybe at the beginning and then you just kept doing it. Because artists do shorthands. Yeah, I guess so, right? Because so you, you, you need to identify... Put out pages. You have to, mm-hmm. And you have to make the character identifiable. And if it's just a guy, you need something about him that you can identify quickly. Yeah. So if he's just a guy in a suit, how many other guys in the suits are in that room? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially if you think about other guys in suits and that you already got like Robbie and Jonah... And, you know what I mean? Yeah. A whole bunch of other people in there. What do you think about Green Goblin, Nick? Is, would that be your top Spidey, or would you have other Spidey guys in there? Top, top Spidey? Definitely not top street level. Yeah, that's fair. F- Fisk is my street level pick. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you want to pick, like, a guy... like see, And, and I think that would... I would rather see, like, Fisk over Carnage. Because yes, I think Fisk I has got, like, better history. And if you're... Traditionally, they've been on that same, like, threat in a city... Let yeah. less the world, right? Yeah, I would, I would be fine. I hadn't thought of any Spider-Man villains really, because Spider-Man isn't my thing. I was just curious, uh, but I, for the reasons you uh, gave, I could see putting him at my five and bumping Fisk up. Oh, okay. I'm excited to see. Okay, hold on. Well, wh- what do you have at? So you got Magneto at three. Yep. Okay. So who do you have at three then, Nick? Me. I had Thanos. You had Thanos? Okay, yeah. Ralph, sorry, that's right. So we're, are we all on fours then? Well, that's, okay, fives. Will, four. Who do you have four? Because this, this is where it gets interesting. Thanos. Oh, man. Thanos? Thanos. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we covered that. So yeah. you, you just, you're just you like bumping everyone down for the marquee. Everyone takes a backseat. Yeah, the only one that's different than to you guys would probably be my number five. Okay. Well, like, how come you had like Thanos below Magneto? For the same reasons that Jordan said. And like you two said about his historical stuff and him being a character and how he's kind of like not always the super evil and does stuff. And like basically all what you guys said about Magneto is the reason. Oh, okay. Sorry. Out. For a second, I thought you were talking about Thanos. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So like, like Magneto's got better development in history. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. I think he's just fair. better. That's, that's legit. Point. I was just curious. Yeah. Evil for evil with a purpose. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> fair. And like maybe Slowly. like, uh, like it, again, is the hero of his own story. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, especially in Doom. Okay, so who's Nick got it for? Now. Was, was no, no, but beforehand. Before beforehand, I, though. Like, I, your original list. It was having a Nihilus. A Nihilus? Yes, okay. Is that who you have? So, no-ish. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought that was bingo. Okay, <laughs> well, so I have a ni- I made a top ten list. I'm not going to share all of them, but I was okay. having such struggle with my last four and five. I'm so happy you mentioned a Nihilus, yeah. though, because I was really debating... Putting him at 405. He ended up a bit lower. Yeah. But I was like, I'm giving him a shout out because I think he's sick. I, I'd make yeah. arguments for that. I want to hear what you have to say about him. My main list. reason is because I love Marvel Cosmic. Yeah. And like he's the quintessential cosmic villain to me since I love the dad Dan Abnett stuff. Yeah. So like I don't know much of his history. I don't I didn't go back and like read the backlog for him. But he's just he's great and he's a, a fantastic four villain and when he shows up in that He's great. I love Fantastic uh, Four villains. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're so weird at the same time as being awesome. They're always like <laughs> like outright villainous too. Yeah. Like Annihilus mm-hmm. kind of like uh like he's even like more so than Thanos. Like there's no there's no bargaining with Annihilus. More than yeah. any of these other guys we've been talking about, yeah. right? Like and he's kinda of like Carnage in the fact that where he's just like, No man, I'm here to destroy you. Like Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with Annihilus you have an annihilation wave. I'll make an argument that it doesn't really involve the character that much. But what was going on at the same time as the Annihilation Wave? Civil War. Which was a bigger threat? Yeah, like, definitely Annihilation. Yeah. yeah and, like, that's why you have the Nova scene when he comes to Earth. There's the shit going on in space. And they all just ignore him. And he's like, fuck. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. But whatever. Oh, you can. <laughs> uh, we can swear on here. We... We need. We met our quota of one swear at least. We're yeah. on disclaimer. That's, that's the one F word you get. It's like a, a 14A movie. Yeah. yeah, you can just get one. There you go. Yeah. You <laughs> Make it a good gratuitous one. <laughs> <laughs> and like he he's been like he's fought uh, Thanos. He's fought like the United Front of yeah. the. Uh, cosmic heroes, which are always more powerful than the Earth-based heroes. Well, yeah, because you got to be like space gauge yeah. good, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's something where I'm, I'm not even upset that that's on your list. I'm kind of glad that it's yeah. on your list, even if it's not on mine, because I wanted to acknowledge Annihilus because 
well, just for most of the boxes, aside from maybe personality, yeah, uh, just everything about him is so cool. Like, I think I would argue he has one of the coolest looks in all of Marvel Comics. He looks like yeah. an insect with these big leathery bat wings, kind of robotic, too. Like, he just yeah. looks sick. And he always looks, like, the exact same, so he's identifiable, but they always tweak him a little bit, too. So he's got, like, new extensions and, like, mm-hmm. arms and armor bits. And yeah. uh, very classic villain, too, right? Like, really, really fantastic four. Mm-hmm. I, Anyone who doesn't know Annihilus comes from the negative zone and his annihilation wave is like literally just destroyed that entire world, universe, whatever. Yeah, and, humans are locusts. Basically. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they're, they're, he basically leads a plague of cosmic locusts and That's they're it, crazy yeah. strong. And the cosmic, his cosmic rod in the negative zone is basically like cosmic cube, right? It's, it's like all powerful. So mm-hmm. there's some good stuff. Also, I always love Annihilus and the annihilation wave just for like the death of Johnny storm. It's yes. one of the best <laughs> superhero deaths of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I cried and I don't even care for Johnny storm. I cried like a child during that death because yes. it was so, but it was also so badass. Like it was yeah. so mm-hmm. cool. Like just such a heroic way to go out. Yeah. I mean, can I spoil the ending of the, should we not spoil or should we spoil things? Go for it. Okay. Cause like, I, I think there's even, I think, uh, Nihilus has a really sick death. I put death in quotation yeah. marks because he co- he always comes back. He's always reborn. That's um, he's kind of like Thanos, where you can actually right. kill him off. So you can do cool things where he, like Nihilus gets killed like four or five times. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And he gets killed in awesome ways. Yeah, like in <laughs> like, the two. I believe it's because he's so strong. Right? Annihilation run that Nova just shoves his hand down Annihilus's throat yes. and just pulls the guts out through his mouth. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh! Yeah. This is Anyone crazy. who hasn't read Annihilation and like some of the stuff around there is so good there's so many good parts like that even in uh like thanos imperative yeah mm-hmm. it's got some sick moments like that where thanos just shows up and mercs somebody or mm-hmm. uh, likewise um see like in annihilation where drax kills thanos yeah that one i'm always just like oh shit because he's one of the last three big players yeah. you really think mm-hmm. it's gonna be thanos and annihilus and then it's yeah. just like yeah you're gone dude yeah <laughs> like mm-hmm. he's dead now this was awesome uh i think annihilus was definitely like on my uh on my shout outs, like mm-hmm. as, as deserving to be probably top ten, maybe top twenty. I have a, a feeling he's gonna be a more popular character in the future. I was just speculating with Will earlier today too, that there's also Annihilus has a lot to do with time travel. Yeah. That he has the power to tra- travel through time. And now that the MCU and the movies have kind of opened Pandora's box where, oh, time travel exists, what do we do now? Cause can't we undo stuff? It would be really helpful to introduce someone who could counter time travel. Like a nihilist. You could also see Kang, too. Mm-hmm, exactly. That. And I think Kang, he's also on my honorable mention list. And that's like just a classic just the same good character, one. basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. He's almost literally the exact yeah, same exactly. character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that one. I, I think a nihilist is sick. So, you had, so originally you had nihilist and then Fist. Kingpin. Yeah. How come you had Kingpin on the top five? Well... Like over some of the world or universe ending guys. Because or like guy like Carnage. the universe ending guys are important and... And, um, I don't know what I'm saying, but uh, I'll move on. Um, Fisk represents, to me, the ground-level heroes, the street-level heroes of Marvel. Hmm. And he's their villain. He's the villain that represents, that can combat each and every street-level hero. Because he, you can put him in any story with a street-level hero, and he works. He's really, like, their best, like, most grounded villain. Yeah, and, like, he, especially now with where it's with what's going on in Daredevil and what's gone on in so many other series in the past um, and his appearances in multiple mediums now he is a great villain D'Onofrio so yeah D'Onofrio is good and in um, Spider-Verse great yeah um, but he represents to me the entire level of heroes and he is their villain like he can go against Punisher he can go against even Iron Fist Fist works as a, he works as a villain yeah. for mm-hmm. he works as a villain for Daredevil, Daredevil Spider Man, Spider Man, any hero that's all, Captain America, yeah, anybody Captain who America. wants to do spy stuff, even yeah. he can get into that angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's so versatile. Corporate espionage, he can He's, mess with Iron Man. Yeah, he, you can use him for basically anything because he doesn't need to be like the main villain for a story, but he's so he can be so influential in the world, especially in the states, which is where the world basically of Marvel yeah. exists. He's so freaking relatable too yeah. because the idea of like some rich dude controlling things and being like this like kind of shadowy overbearing evil figure is like 
pretty real world. <laughs> yeah, right. he's, yeah. a, he's a witch figure that came from like the next witches. Yeah. Um, which is another thing that people love. He makes slightly the label like his motives have changed over time. Um, he also flip flopped on his level of good, yeah. goodness and mm-hmm. badness. Uh, his morality shifts yeah. with the times. It shifts with what has happened to him. Um, he's been mayor. Like he's lit- that was a cool story. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. gone straight. Yeah, stayed straight for quite a while. And then came back. I think that was in the eighties too. No, that that the what I'm talking about was. Uh, he was the ma- he might still be is he still the mayor? I think so. Oh, that was in the new like series they did before this new Daredevil came out. Yeah, yeah. He was that. I think he might still be the mayor. In this he might one. still be. I think he mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Uh, I haven't caught up with this. Because he was in Spider Man a yeah. while ago, but I'm a, like two paperbacks behind. Yeah. Yeah. No. W- but, like, he's gone straight. You can go ahead. No, go for it. Uh, and oh. then like, he's still a physical threat as well. Like. Yeah, you can still have him like fight mm-hmm. Captain America at the end of the graphic novel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's not a threat against lots of these characters in, like, a sense of, like, mental illness or anything, but he's just a big guy, and he beats people up really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also and, like, has wealth and power behind him. Yeah. 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 Like, he doesn't have <clears throat> powers either. He's just a guy who's just so, like, street smart that he can rise above everything. Mm-hmm. You know, man, hearing you talk about it, he really, like... Uh, he, Criminal Batman. Well, I was going to say he's really Marvel's Luther. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. in such a way. Mm-hmm. And not just the bald guy, but just in the fact that they're so... <laughs> like, they represent that allegory of, like, evil, right? Yeah. Um, but also, like, in what they can and can't do, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there, it's more about their manipulation and, like, their kind of ever-presence and oh. just, like, the fact that you can kind of plug and play them in with anyone as, like, evil factor uh, that, yeah. that kind of makes them so successful. I right. Think. Yeah. And if you own uh, comics as well, like, Ultimate Comics, he's great in. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. Comics, yeah. I think it's a really. I'm. I'm glad you brought Kingpin up because that's when I'm like, oh yeah, like I. I love the Kingpin, and when I look at my own list, there's just so many like world-ending people yeah. that it's just sort of refreshing to yeah. be like, this character is so good that I could see people liking him more than a lot of these other like crazy take over the world type of villains. When right? we were brainstorming, Will was the one who mentioned it, and immediately yeah. we were like, oh. Kingpin. Yeah. I, I like him because, like, you tie him to being, like, Lex Luthor of the Marvel. Because I like Lex <coughs> Luthor and him because they're, like, Superman shows, like, the one side of humanity. Like, he super, in, uh, super sh- like, embodies it, just like how Captain America kind of did originally. Yeah, like the, like, then, um, like the ideal. Yeah, and yeah. then whereas Fisk and Le- Luthor are, like, the other half of humanity, the more, like, greedier, corrupt, corruptish, but, like, kind of, like, going... Selfish. Yeah, but you're not... So super selfish and you're like you're still like you're using like oh this crisis happened and superheroes are here we should have our own team and he kind of makes his own team but he's motivations and stuff yeah. are great they represent yeah. it's like ambition hum- to me yeah humanity's ambition Un- yeah. unchecked ambition yeah 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 like ambition at any cost that's actually man that's really well played mm-hmm. actually gotta love it I actually he was not on my list but he was uh, an honorable mention um what the hell did you have at the, you're at the bottom of your list there, buddy? I saw you made some corrections. Well, I don't know. I'm always swaying. That's why I, I had to, like, for myself to put a top five, I had to do a top ten first and then be like, ah, but what are these? I, yeah. I, I'll i stick to my initial guns, I guess, just because they were the first lot I had. And I'll be easily swayed because this is where I get a little flip floppy. Yeah, that's all right. But the, for my number four, I put Galactus. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... My my three before that were Magneto, Doctor Doom, and Carnage, and Galactus is kind of like the first really big like, world ender. I mean, Doctor Doom can be, and I argued Carnage and Magneto could be too, but this is like the one, my first one that's like, hey, the Avengers are needed. Like Galactus, Galactus scale. is here. Yeah, right? whereas like mm-hmm. Magneto is more yeah Earth scale. Yeah. When, you know. mm-hmm. And I, I think he's just my entire life been one of the most iconic ones for that where I, every image I ever saw of Galactus was he's in front of the earth <laughs> who doesn't know that that look right like right. That, the, mm-hmm. the outline of that helmet right like it's so iconic like talking about guys who were designed well freaking shout, right. shout back out to Jack Kirby mm-hmm. rest in peace because 
And and his design hasn't really changed like at all. He no, gets bigger yeah. and smaller, but he just looks fantastic. So and it's so it's such design. an insane design, right? Mm-hmm. You stop and think about it. It's so weird looking, and his He's got proportions such a tall are kind of off. Yeah, his mm-hmm. head is huge. His hands are huge. Like those little arms on the side. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, like on that board up there, I drew the worst picture of Galactus ever, and people still know it's him. <laughs> people are giving us compliments on that. Actually, oh, that's awesome. Man. That's yeah. great. They've been trying to guess it. The, they get stuck on the deadly class character. Or no, the Umbrella County character. Oh yeah, yeah I put I put them in a range yeah, of I like known. It. It was good. Known. I I my argument against Galactus and why I took him off because he was going to be my number five for a minute was um, I don't think that he's like uh, I would argue that he's not an actual villain. I would I argue that. I would argue that Galactus <laughs> is and the way that they present him in the com- comics is more of like a force of nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. He's like a cosmic um, like they call him a cosmic entity, but he's also just like a cosmic constant. Yeah. So he's just going, he just does his thing. He's a force of nature, right? Yeah. He's an inevitability. But but that what makes him also a cool villain, yeah. though, is that it's so, imp- it could not be less personal. Yeah. Right? right. It's just so cold. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the scale of it, that it's just somebody, like, so much huger and more powerful and just indomitable than us and just, like, the terror of, like, pure powerlessness. Right. right. And I think that's where, that that's where I was kind of compromising everything else to be like, yep, yeah, this is the one that's kind of my big, this is my guy. big I'll baddie in here. that yeah. I just want on there. That's yeah. fair. I think he also, and I know this is technically kind of a cheat, but he kind of comes by association with the Silver Surfer, and that's just yeah. something that's like it's cool to I see them in those the pictures Surfer, together man. and the panels. I think and Silver mm-hmm. Surfer is one of those characters that just has captured people forever too, right? And I think mm-hmm. both those guys they're yeah. just so, you know, they yeah. reinvent themselves. Like yeah, even Galactus we invented it was we invented in the Ultimates comics, uh, not like not Marvel yeah. Ultimate universe, Sorry. but like the Ultimates one and two the. Uh, where they could become the life giver. Yeah. And then that's gone now. But it was really cool when it happened. That was really, really mm. interesting. Yeah. When it was uh, not like the Ultimate Universe, but like Captain Marvel yeah. and Blue Marvel yeah. and, yeah, like mm-hmm. the, the American Ultimates. Chavez uh, uh, and yeah. a couple of others. It's basically what they spun. It's basically what they spun Mighty, Avenger, uh, Mighty Avengers into when they added Captain Marvel to it and sent them to space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good series, actually. Yeah. Super underrated. Because they did some cool stuff redoing um, like Master Order and Lord Chaos at the yeah. same time. Some of those Universal guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they had Blue Marvel in it. And Blue yeah, Blue Marvel's a super fantastic. underrated. Anybody who's looking for a really cool, like, super underappreciated Marvel hero, Blue, go check out Blue Marvel. Yeah. And his Adam story, Bashir? Yeah, Adam Bashir. Uh, fantastic story behind him. I always want to say he's Alan, but he's just no. not. <laughs> uh, uh, so you had then, who's your five? Uh, my five I had is Thanos. Okay. So we did touch on that. I... You got Again, some honorable mentions. You want to make some shout outs while you got, sure. or, or, or do you want to make some alterations? Are you going to change on us? Well, well, here's the thing. Like, I'm I'm so wishy washy on these last we know, two. We know cause... Nick's change is that mm-hmm. he moved Annihilus out and then moved up Fisk and yeah. Goblin. Yeah. Right? See, in Annihilus, I even I'm tempted to throw up just after we were talking to throw up further. Um, but I guess the two I had uh, I, just to mention them. I guess the other ones I wanted to mention were Ultron, Dark Phoenix. Ultrons make sense. Same yeah. Phoenix. So uh, iconic, Dark mm-hmm. Phoenix, right? Like Annihilus, and then Fin Fang Foom. Is yes, <laughs> Sorry. right. Like Fin Fang Foom is one I debated as my number five for oh, a long time. Yes, dude. But like Galactus and Thanos, I'm like, oh, they're just more iconic. Yeah. But there's a freaking space dragon I as spent, a Marvel villain. I spent right? so long trying to decide whether I was going to put a troll answer in at number five or just up like that's where I was going to sneak in my Homer pick, right? Mm-hmm. And. Uh, when Will and I were brainstorming, we were, I, I, did you say Fin Fang Foom? Yeah. We were also just like, yes, always worth yeah, mentioning. Right? Just one of the sweetest characters of all time. He makes absolutely no freaking sense. No, right? Fin that's that's why he just got beat by Galactus and Thanos. If it He's wasn't so them, sweet. heck, He's I think so I'd move sweet. them up to number six. Uh, <laughs> I have like a huge, sorry, crush on, on space dragons of any kind. <laughs> My pick for like the not making sense pick uh, was uh, Shag- Shamagorath. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From um, Doctor from Doctor Strange, yeah. yeah. That's a really good one. I, I think lots of people would have picked Dormammu over him, but I think yeah. Shamagorath is actually more interesting. Yeah, like Dormammu is a good, is a better villain, but Shamagorath is like again like Galactus almost. He's a cosmic force. Yeah, like he's from uh, far, far beyond. I think is what they. Could, yeah, he's from like his own plane of existence. Yeah, yeah. he's the where he like consumed everything there. Like that, yeah. 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 And the like, cosmic horror is one of my favorite things. Yeah, and, it's very like Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah. No man, he's sweet. I agree. Like Shemagroth is like that's a good obscure one too. I dig that. Okay, well, 
you, you've been waiting patiently, and you teased us with this at your number five. Dazzle me, dude. The Razzle Dazzle. Give me... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm going to do the reverse, like how these shows always do, like, oh, before they go to number one, they do honorable mentions, but we're doing it in reverse. Okay. So, my honorable mentions, and kind of f- filling with this whole, like, silliness was, I went more philosophical with my answers. Uh, I know we talked about this, like, yesterday, Mike, uh... I chose the elder beings of the universe is like mm-hmm. eternity and the other guys like the big dudes. Infinity. That, it, yeah, because you're like order, like order and chaos. Yeah, because it's like there's there's bad guys like Thanos and Magneto, and they have like the different spectrums. But like then we have like Galactus, which is the force of nature. But what's more scarier, a thing that is evil and has like an, a beginning and an end, or a thing that's is and will be kind of like that whole like beginning and the end, like constant yeah that just sits and watches and is like they're so you, permanent yeah yeah and they're, it's it's i think like the like the god terror right where like their yeah. motivations and their thoughts and stuff is like on a level so far above our own that the idea of like what would they be doing and like at what whims do they play with the lives right. of mortals you know what i mean like that's scary mm-hmm. shit like and you, that's you, cool you know it. and you know something's up and like they're there because like in the original thanos like the infinity gauntlet mm. thanos even causes them to manifest so you're just like yeah. What? What? Why? What are they? What is? Yeah. Well, that's one of the cool things too is that like even they weren't strong enough to take down the yeah. Infinity Gauntlet, which is so what makes that that, w- that would be my yeah. my honorable like silly mention besides Captain America. <laughs> You're just like fishing for the Hydra trolls. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the Maker was another deal. Oh, the five, Makers. Yeah. So, the Maker yeah. is so cool. My man. number five was either between the Maker. Or the Black Order. For anyone who doesn't know, the Maker is Ultimate Universe Reed Richards. He's now been... Who's now yeah. in our universe. He's in Venom right now, and he was originally in Ultimates by uh, John Hickman mm-hmm. when he brought him back as the Maker. He was also Very featured cool. in Absolute Carnage recently. Yeah, and I just excellent. love the way they drew him. Like, it made me rethink how, yeah. like, Reed Richards stretches. Yeah. So he almost seems a little more liquidy. Oh, I yeah. really like it. Reed Richards is an, uh, a character that is really easy to get stale, but if you're really imaginative, you can do some... He, he can do some gross stuff with Reed Richards. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, no. you were saying who, who did you say was your number five? The Black Order, as in like Black Order of Thanos. Yes, okay, that's like pretty Ebony cool. Ma and yeah, all that. yeah, yeah Corvus okay. Glaive. The comic mm-hmm. version of the the movie version sucks. I just look. Lo- Ebony Ma is good in the movie. Yes, yeah, one, I, I, I one of like them the, is yeah. But like the, the set. Corvus Glaive is pretty bitch made yeah. in the movies, mm-hmm. and yeah. same with Proxima, and they're like arguably the two coolest ones. Yeah, yes. and uh, they renamed it. In, but uh, Black Dwarf or whatever. Yes, yeah. Black Dwarf. Who became something. Something. Yeah, so for like my notes, why, like. Didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So on the same theory as like the Marquis of Death being the Teacher of Doom being number one, the reason why they were number five is because they were the like most trusted soldiers of Thanos. Mm-hmm. And so like you have like Ebony Maw, which is like the leader, the prophet y sort of dude, and he has like big brain powers. That's what I wrote down for the note. Yeah. Well, Ebony Maw is so convincing. Yeah. He managed to convince, was it Doctor Strange, uh, to just not do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When they invaded uh, in Infinity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When they first introduced And And um, then, what's his name? They have the ex Herald of Galactus. They have, what's his The guy that kind of was like a chin thing. Um, not Corvus. No. Uh, the big dude. Not Black Dwarf either. There's the other one <laughs> that has... One of them is was a Hilt of Galactus at one point. Yeah. It's going to be teasing so many listeners where they're just going to be shouting their name, being like, yeah. It's this! It's this you guy, fool. you idiot. <laughs> yeah, so it was Ebony Moff. That, he's also awesome there. Then you have like Corvus Glaive, which I just like the character design. I like him. He's super cool. He's cool. He's he's an immortal with a like D&D weapon. Yeah. Like... You're like you because he's with all these other dudes and they're just like oh he has telepathy and like genius brain and tactics and he's just like I can stab you real good and you cannot stab me back. <laughs> Nick, are you talking about super giant? I don't think so. Let me double check. Super okay, giant never mind. Shit. Sorry. Which she's yeah. on this list. Yeah. Too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Black Order was only invented like first appearance in comics around 2011, right? Is that that's a more uh, yeah, Infinity one. Number One? Yeah, that's a uh, no. It wasn't Infinity oh, Number no, One. New it Avengers. was New Avengers something. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but but that was the prelude to Infinity. Yeah. It was only a couple years ago. This is a great modern mm-hmm. edition. That's another John Hickman creation, mm-hmm. like uh, the Maker. Like some other cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think Black Order is one of those ones that as soon as he introduced them, it just felt so natural. Like, because uh, they always presented Thanos as like this space warlord too, and like he would have these 
just people flocking to him because they knew that he killed yeah. people and they wanted to be evil with him. And it was like, yeah, Thanos' generals would probably be, like, pretty terrifying. I think I love the idea of, like, his group of generals, yeah. right, being, like, having all these crazy powers, too, mm-hmm. right? Like, and I, I can't quite remember their end goals, but I do know... The movie did also slightly affect this, so I can't say 100% the comics, but I liked the idea in the movie how they kind of shared, like, so, like, they shared his idea, and that's why he was, they were, like, his most trusted generals, and how, like, mm. M.D. Ma was going, like, oh, your planet, he's, like, he was the herald of Thanos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved that angle on him. Yeah. I was, it's, it's funny how many times comic artists will, like, try and make a new villain, because, I mean, everyone wants to make a new villain that'll be the new iconic one, and it's yeah. just always funny to me that they created that in 2013, fully knowing that Thanos was teased at the end of the first Avengers, yeah. and I always wonder if it was like kind of a sneaky thing where they're kind of fishing a bit. Like where maybe they're like, oh, Hickman oh, and Diodato were like sitting there yeah. being like, "Hopefully, we get this in the movie." Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna need something for like, Thanos. Yo, if so we let's can sell this crossover, stuff. we're gonna get in the movies, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, wouldn't you be thinking that? Like, yeah, 100%. and like it works, right? Yeah, like, if we only sell a few years gonna, later, it's gonna get good to be in there. Of yeah, because there's Thanos, right? And now, just like that, in a few short years, Could they're now solidified. Could you imagine crossover is trash and we never saw the Black Order in the movies? Dang. Yeah, I mean, there's. So many times the MCU almost didn't happen, like yeah. the cinematic universe. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's my list. Well, I've got one that all you plebeians have left off that you should have mentioned, especially even in your uh, honorable, honorable mentions. mentions. Uh, I've got some honorable mentions. Uh, I love Mister Sinister as X Men villains. I think he's mm. awesome. He's really creepy. It's that like. Um, it's like the it's like the fly, right? It's that um, becoming something other, right? Yeah. That like non humanness because he's always like getting into you and manipulating yeah. your genes. It's so creepy, right? You don't mm-hmm. want somebody messing around with your insides. That's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, the leader, because I'm a huge Hulk homer, and I think leader is probably one of his best villains. He's one of the best threats. Uh, he's really, really cool. Uh, honorable mention, the Hulk right now, because yes. he's I was debating putting him on unreal. the list, Unreal. I put him on the <laughs> list just so I could talk about how good Immortal Hulk I, is. He was, my, he was going to be like, he was, he was my number six. Nice. for The Immortal Hulk, yeah. specifically. Yeah, it's if you guys the are Hulk. reading Immortal yeah. Hulk, it's so... Yeah. And honestly, because Hulk was like the Avengers' original villain, right? Well, technically, like Loki, but... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it works. Uh, Loki, also on my list, because yeah. he, for me, was a top Thor villain. And he uh, was going to be my number five. Um, and I kind of have decided last minute here that Loki is actually my number six. Um, purely based on the fact that I think this other guy has, like, a couple better moments. But I think Loki has Loki more would be moments. my number six, too. Loki's got more moments, I think, than this guy to come. Uh, shout out to Hela, too, who I think is really good. Oh, yes, um, yes. Loki slash Hela. Yeah. Um, not shout out to Craven. No, I'm just kidding. Craven's last hunt. So Craven the Hunter is. Yeah, that's one of the most underrated villains. I'm I think he's to think some people. I think it's because there's a lot of Craven stories out there, and like yeah. three of them are absolutely fantastic, and the rest of them are kind of like whatever. He was <laughs> right? behind Super it the whole time, yeah. and then yeah, like oh, Spidey beat him. There he goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, number five, the Red Skull. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a fair one. It's the Red Skull. Man. Yeah, um, I think that he's got everything that lots of these other guys got. He's got the history. He's like helped establish the Marvel brand. He's Cap's big villain. He fights the Fantastic Four. He fights the Avengers. He can fight anybody, right? He's got the science, and like more than that, he's got um, the thing that like Fisk has got. I think which is really cool, where he's got like villains working for him yeah. too, right? So like uh, Arnim Zola and stuff. Crossbones. Crossbones. Um, uh, his daughter. His daughter. Zim. Seeing Baron Zemo sometimes yeah. you know what I mean I love Baron Zemo Baron Zemo is sweet yeah. mm-hmm. I, I, I like Red Skull better yeah, than Baron no, Zemo Red Skull is a better villain he's, he's the better Zemo villain Baron Zemo is my favorite of Captain America's the, the Winter Soldier graphic novels the Red Skull twist in there yeah. spectacular um, even just like even just the way that he like his design is so good yeah. just his appearance in Old Man Logan just so he can show up and get his ass kicked by Logan it looks so good just because it's the Red Skull yeah. that you know what I mean I don't even care that he's like on there and then gets beheaded and then Wolverine jet packs away and how crazy it is because it's so cool yeah. right um i i think red skull like pulls all the lists he he killed cap in one of the best best comic deaths of all time yeah so surprising uh also one of the most punk moves by marvel by not putting it in civil war yeah. <laughs> like what a yeah. rope a dope man oh man i would be upset i could see that um he's like man he's died and come back to life in like three or four and if you want to hear a crazy, crazy character biology. Red Skull, man. Yeah. Like, the ways that he's died and come back to life are, like, ludicrous. It's the type of shit that only happens in comics, yeah. and I kind of love that. Um, I think that he's got a lot of the stuff here. I think 4 and 5 gets really tough because I want Loki on the list really badly, 
But I think that aside from, uh, like, starting the Avengers, um, like, being the Thor villain and, like, Siege and um, the rebirth of Thor by Strakinsky after, like, Civil War and all that stuff, and Ragnarok, if you haven't read Thor Ragnarok, holy shit, so good, man. And Loki in that one is, that that's my ultimate Loki one because he's just so cutthroat. And he's had great character development over the years, too, like Magneto, where he... Uh, you know, became the kid and became good for a while. And then he was like Lady Loki because he was stealing Sif's body. So he's had some cool character designs as well. He always looks great. Yeah. But I just think that Red Skull is more of the villain. Because Loki has those parts where, for the same reason I put Doom over Magneto. Because Skull is like, the, you're, he will always be the villain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that if you want to write like a crazy mystery turner yeah. and you needed like, and then there's one more level of reveal, it could always just be the Red Skull. I think that's one of the cool things about him. Like, even when they did Axis, which was kind of a silly but fun crossover, yeah. right? It was just like, oh, the Red Skull is doing this. And it's like, of course he is. Yeah. You know I mean, you're not going to question it. It's the Red Skull. You yeah. Know what I mean? It's like if you were abducted by aliens and you, walk, yeah. you escaped and you saw Jack Black just walking down the way eating popcorn. It just is. You yeah. Just, you just see it. You'd be mm -hmm. like, homie's got to eat. There he goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's, just, that's just another day, like another Monday for Jack Black. He's so like, I think we've got like a solid top two at least, maybe top three. I know we can all agree on Doom and Magneto. Uh, I think we all agree on Goblin being in the top six at least, maybe, not Will. Uh, I think everybody's on <laughs> board with Thanos in the top five, 100%, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we definitely got at least three of our tops there and then maybe a couple homers in the bottom. Yeah, and even like you mentioned Annihilus, and even yeah, though it's not Annihilus. as high, it's like yeah. we're not really arguing too far with I think everybody these. agrees Annihilus in the top ten even. Yeah, right? so, exactly. You know, I mean, a couple mm -hmm. of like the ones that like that are different on the on our bottom. So I think our top tens feature like Annihilus, Galactus, Red Skull, Green Goblin, some of the fin ones Fang that we've put in maybe? there. Fin Fang Foom maybe <laughs> as a ten. <laughs> yeah. He slips in there. Yeah. I, I think that evaluating villains is really fun because it's a cool um, – it's a cool literary exercise, right, where you get to, like, mm -hmm. evaluate and break down characters. But it's also just – you just got to look at pieces of art and decide who looks cool and who says the most badass shit, right? Yeah. Because uh, that's – oh, man. I was watching uh, High Plains Drifter this morning, and I think that's one of my favorite Clint Eastwood ones because he just walks around saying absolutely stellar cool stuff the entire movie, right? Yeah. And that's a very Clint Eastwood cowboy movie thing to do. But I think there's, like, that type of uh, swagger in, like, the villains that I really, really, really enjoy. And if you think about reading comics, I'm all about, like, I want to turn that page and, like, have the guy say the thing or, like, get to the bottom of the, th the bubble and be like, whoa, right? Especially mm -hmm. when you're hitting that payoff moment. Yeah. Well, it's, like, um, just a recent one in, uh, was it the first issue of House of X? Magneto's mm -hmm. line? I won't yeah. say it, but fantastic line. Great line. Uh... And I just want to mention quickly I just thought of him a bullseye for the Daredevil. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's on a lot of lists. Yeah. Maybe not that's in my top one. ten. But oh no, an not. honorable mention. Yeah. Definitely his best villain other than Fisk for sure. Yeah. Like if like, you want to talk actual powered villain. guys, yeah, mm -hmm. just a good villain too. Yeah, yeah good personal grudge. Yeah. Uh, I think that was all for us today. Uh, thank you guys again for coming out, Jordan and Nick. Really yeah, happy to uh, do this. It was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Will, for uh, hanging out yeah. and uh, continuing to be the. Cranky right hand of doom. Uh, thank you all you guys for listening, and thanks again to Wizards Comics for putting us up and helping us out with this. Um, if you want to see more stuff and see more takes and give us some more topics, please leave some comments. Uh, please send us an email. Um, like us. Uh, whatever support you guys got. We, we had a lot of fun doing this, and we want to do some more. So stay tuned for next time. Uh, this has been Pulled from the Shelf, and uh, I'm Mike Behrman, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Woo!